Hey everybody, welcome back to TheClinicalTrialsGuru.com. Again, that website address for you is TheClinicalTrialsGuru.com. Keep sending the questions via email, dan at TheClinicalTrialsGuru.com. It's fueling all my content, and I've got tons of questions. I'm getting to all of them. I've been getting numerous emails a day from different people, so thank you very much. Uh, most of them request to remain anonymous. And I kid you not, I mean, I'm not making up these questions. I'm actually getting them, uh, reading it from my phone here on the email. And just to let you know also, I don't really prepare for these questions. I have read them in advance of shooting, but oftentimes I forget. So you'll actually see me thinking during the video a few times. And I don't know if I should change that, the format, or just keep it this way, but... Honestly, there's no strategy behind me doing that. It's just I've been busy. So anyways, here's one question on EDC, which is electronic data capture. He says, I've seen one of your videos on EDC, which I will link up to on the bottom of this blog post. But can you elaborate um, on the data management team from a clinical project management perspective. So I'm going to go through some of your questions in this email, sir, uh, one at a time. Do clinical sites have their own laboratory to perform blood and urine tests? Um, the answer is yes and no. Some do, some don't. It's just that simple. Many private smaller sites like mine, South Coast Clinical Trials, do not. We draw the blood. We prepare it, and we ship it to the sponsor, who usually has a central lab, where they will analyze the blood and fax us or email us the results. <clears throat> so his question is, if they get the test done elsewhere, how are the results entered into the clinical site database? So like I said, we have to wait for the lab results to come back. That usually takes a few days and then we enter in the ECRF. So when they ask for data to be entered within five days of capturing it on the source documents, um, usually the lab results are received within two or three days, never more than five, so we can start entering the lab results as soon as we get the lab results. Hopefully that answers that question. Then he says, can you elaborate more on manual CRF and eCRF? I want to know how eCRF is prepared by clinical project managers. So manual CRFs, the paper documents. The eCRF, usually the sponsors will outsource this to a company that just specializes in eCRF, electronic case report forms. That's what a CRF is, for those of you that don't know. And a lot of times they are built to capture exactly what's on the source documentation, but most importantly, they're there to capture all the data points that the sponsors need and want. And there are some benefits of having this. For example, if you have a subject at your site um, who does not meet inclusion-exclusion criteria, but the research site had oversight and maybe they enrolled that patient into the study, as soon as you enter the data, the system, if it's smart enough, and some of them are, will immediately flag it and say this person should not be enrolled. So oftentimes it does provide, the ECRF provides a safeguard for the research clinic, and it will flag them, hey, you know, this subject should not be enrolled in the study. There's different flags like that, which is why I like ECRFs. Now, they don't always catch it, and they don't always catch everything, so don't rely on the ECRF to... Um, have you enroll patients like that's the last resort you should know your protocol there's no substitution for knowing your protocol but it does serve as kind of a last resort for verifying inclusion exclusion criteria um, does high tech act certified EHR have any meaningful use at any clinical sites um, no the only thing about e, uh, ECRFs for sites is Part 11 of the FDA, uh, electronic systems. We have to verify that only authorized personnel will use it and log on to the systems. So that's about it. 
Uh, how is the migration of the clinical data done from clinical site to central database at the CRO sponsored level? So once the data is inputted by the site, monitors can look at it, verify it against the source, and also make sure that all the um, information is consistent with what's in the source. Once it, they have something called a data freeze where they have all the sites enter all their data, then they'll query it, they want all the sites to answer the queries, resolve the queries, and then they, they'll freeze the data so they can do an internal analysis. And they'll do this like every three months or so. And if you're a coordinator, you know exactly what I'm talking about when the monitors are going to be calling you and bothering you about uh, data lock is coming up or data freeze is coming up. We need you to get these um, queries resolved in the ECRF. Once that's done, then the CRO and sponsor comes in there and analyzes it on their end. Once all the data is clean, they call it clean data where there's no queries, things like that. Um, we use the software provided. There is no software. It's all cloud-based systems. Um, and that's how we migrate it to the ECRFs. There's no migration, it's manually entering that on a computer. So there's no software for that, um, as far as I know. Uh, during site qualification process, what does study sponsor look for? Especially EDC related stuff. They usually look for things like, do you have experience with this platform? Do you have experience with that platform? Who's going to be entering the data? Who's going to be answering the queries? How quickly do you enter data onto the ECRF once you get it on the source documents? Things like that. Um, if central database at CRO is developed on Oracle and the EDC systems that are used in clinical sites will be a hundred different varieties, how are all these softwares integrated to transfer the clinical data in a proper format? All I know about that is that each study has a unique ECRF. While it may be on the same platform, they're all customized for the study, obviously. So um, each study requires its own login for its own ECRF system, regardless of whether it's the same exact platform. If you have a hundred studies at your site, you're going to have a hundred different logins. Uh, it's just the way it is. Hopefully this answers your questions. Thank you very much. Keep them coming. Um, I want to give my clinical truck career producers a shout out. It's Sarah Elizabeth Siegler. Resolve Research Solutions, Accurate Clinical Trials, Erd Heart Clinical Trials, PTNR, Patrick Stone, Darshan Kulkarni, Biofarm Systems, Zymewire, Mozio, South Coast Clinical Trials, Breakthrough Clinical Trials, and St. Paul Medical Research Center in Miami, Florida. I'm accepting 100 producers, so let me know if you're interested. You get tons of benefits. Just go check out my page and look at the Producers tab. Let me know if you're interested. Dan at theclinicaltrialsguru.com. Thank you very much.